Hey ya, it's Nax and welcome back to my channel. What's up guys? It's been a while. We're trying to build up the content over here at the tech channel. Um, and for today's video, I'm gonna be doing some tapping. Now, you guys may be wondering what is tapping and I'll get to that in a second. But for today, I will be tapping on this custom motherboard tray, which I made. I will be using this for my next build. But let's put this aside first and let me explain to you what tapping is. So how many of you guys have screwed a screw into a hole? Pretty much everyone. But have you ever wondered how they created those threads in the hole? Probably not. But that's what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to be using this acrylic piece to demonstrate how to do some tapping. Now, the first step that we're going to be doing is we're going to be drilling a hole into the acrylic piece. And that's why I have this wooden board underneath it so that I don't end up damaging the table. So the most important thing to remember when you're drilling a hole is that it has to be straight. This could be solved by using a drill press, but sometimes we don't own a drill press. So I will be using this drill guide right over here. This is what's going to allow me to drill a hole straight through whatever I want to tap onto. Now, usually you'd want to clamp this down with the material that you're tapping onto. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to hold on to it. So I've got my hole here. Now, just because of curiosity, I'm going to try drilling a hole into it without the drill guide. Alright, so let's take a side profile. Look at you. Okay, so this is a good view. So you see the one on the right, the one where I used the guide, is nice and straight. And the one on the left is the one that I freehanded and it's pretty skewed. And I wouldn't really want to put a screw into that. Now it's time for the fun part. We're going to be taking our tapping bit and we're going to start tapping. I'm using the spiral flute bit and this bit is cool because it actually scoops out the tiny bits that are stuck in the hole that you drilled. Also, another thing to keep note is typically you'd want to use some lubricant when you're tapping, especially when you're tapping on metal because metal gets hot. But because this is such a thin piece and I'm using acrylic, I'm just gonna not use lube on it. How I like to do it is, I sorry for all the background noise, Princess is in heat and I have a resin printer going in, going at it, printing some stuff. Alright, so normally this is how I would do it. I would tap, make sure I'm tapping it straight. And every now and then I go back. And what that does is it evacuates all these little bits right there. I'm just not gonna talk and I want you guys to listen to this. This is why I love tapping. Now, the moment of truth, let's see if this fits. And it does! 
All right. So we just tapped our first guy. Right over here. So that's tapping. All right. So now we're going to be doing the real thing. We're going to be tapping the motherboard tray. Time to tap hole number two. Now, do you guys like the sound or do you hate the sound? Because I personally love the sound. And with that said, I'm gonna keep quiet now and enjoy this process. By the way, if you guys are hearing that sound in the background, that's just the 3D printer printing something. So now let's go ahead and screw our standoffs onto our custom motherboard tray. You know what, before we do that, let's go ahead and go over the four most commonly used screws when it comes to PC building because I remember when I first started PC building and I would lose a screw, I wouldn't know what screw to replace it with. So I think this will help. So this is a standoff screw and it's the metric version of it. It's an M3 standoff screw. Oops, let me... So this one is also a standoff screw. It's the non-metric version. It's the number 6-32. Now, uh, most cases though, do use the metric version of the standoff screw. So just keep that in mind. Um, and if you notice, the threads on the non-metric version is a bit more further apart. Now, these are what I like to call the hat screws. I call them that because they look like little hats. Now, you use these screws after you place your motherboard onto your standoff screws. You use these to tighten your motherboard onto it. These screws, which are shaped like a hexagon, are used more commonly around the chassis. They are still metric screws. They are M3.5. You've probably used this to tighten your power supply unit onto your PC case. These are thumb screws. You usually use them to tighten your panels onto the chassis or to tighten your graphics card onto the chassis. They're also M3.5. So those are the four most commonly used screws when it comes to building a PC. And I have this screw kit right over here, which has those four screws and more. And I like it because it's also labeled properly. So if you want to get your hands on this, I'm going to put it in an Amazon link down below. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and screw in our standoffs onto our custom motherboard tray. This is so satisfying. <laughs> Okay. 
and we're all done. Okay, so I've got my motherboard on and I'm putting the screws in. I'm tightening them just a little bit, but not all the way just yet. Then the middle one. All right, so I've got the motherboard attached onto my custom motherboard tray. This is also going to be great if you want to create your very own test bench. I will be using this specific motherboard tray for my next build, and I'm going to be creating content on that and posting it on my main channel and over here before the end of the month. So be sure to check that out. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.